Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. As you can see in the title of the video, I'm going to show you how to install the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240R RGB on an AMD AM4 socket based system. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload multiple times per week, so make sure you are subscribed. Now, this video applies if you're trying to mount the ML240R on a Ryzen compatible motherboard, including the brand new X470 chipset boards as well. If you're interested in how to install this cooler on any Intel sockets, I did an installation guide for the ML240L, which actually, like believe it or not, uses the exact same mounting system as this cooler. There is a link to that in the top right hand corner right now. And yeah, with that said, let's get right into it and install this guy. Sponsored by Cooler Master and the brand new Master Liquid ML240R RGB. Featuring a low profile dual chamber design for awesome cooling and two RGB 120mm fans. Find out more with the link in the description down below. The first thing you want to do is find these brackets right here. These are the brackets for the AM4 installation guide. Yeah, and just installation on AM4 sockets in general. Right, so as you can see here, these brackets have a special notch in them and they only line up on top of this little gap. And yeah, screw them in with the supplied screws that come with the cooler. Pretty straightforward stuff here. Don't worry, it doesn't get much more complicated than this. Right, so you want to do it on the other side as well, and yeah, just take another look at that notch, and you'll see that it will only line up and slot into that little bit perfectly, and drill those screws in. Is it, is it drilling? No, it's not drilling if you use a screwdriver. It's screwing them in. <laughs> Alright, now I'm going to install the fans on the radiator, and I'm doing it a certain way, and I'll talk about why I'm doing it this way later on in the video. You need to use eight of these screws. Now, they're thumb screws, so you do not need a screwdriver to put these in the radiator. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You just use the eight screws provided and screw them in. Now the reason why I'm mounting the fans like this is because the radiator is going in the front of the machine, but we'll get into that a bit later. Okay, so the factory mounting hardware that you actually get on your motherboard, you're going to want to leave that on there because the ML240R actually mounts directly to that original hardware and it clamps over the top with these two attachment points, as you can see here. Right, now this is the time that you want to apply the provided master gel thermal compound onto your CPU. Now I like to use a little bit, just a little bit smaller than a P dot or a grain of rice, but yeah, your, your installation may be different. You might like to do it a different way, but that's the way I recommend doing it. Now it's time to drop the block onto the CPU. Now this can be a little bit tricky if you have not done this before, but be very patient and do not try to force anything because you could potentially break stuff here. Sorry to scare you, but that's the reality. Just be very careful. All you need to do is hook those clips over the top of the plastic mounting points and you should be good to go. And once you do that, just screw it in. Now these screws will actually stop at a certain point and that is the perfect amount of clamping pressure for this cooler and any AM4 chip. So yeah, don't worry, you're all good. Now I'm mounting the radiator to the front of this case and the reason why I'm doing this is because this case in particular is the only way a radiator will fit and the reason why I had the fans in that orientation previously is to pull air from the front and push it through the system. This doesn't actually increase temperatures. In fact, it is more efficient to pull air in and exhaust it through the top and out the back. Now we're going to attach the pump to the motherboard and I'm going to show you the correct PWM header to connect it to. This can be a little bit confusing, but most AM4 motherboards actually have these anyway. So you'll see that on this board in particular, there is a CPU fan header and a CPU opt or option header. Now I like to connect it to the optional header because the fan speed control for the other two fans that we installed on the radiator previously will connect up to that a little bit later. Now let's look at the cables. 
The supplied USB cable is slightly different to you'll see with other coolers. It's got the USB header and a physical USB port. So yeah, it's actually quite nice. Now it actually comes with the micro USB cable that plugs into this and that will connect into the RGB controller, which you can see right here in my hot little hands. And yeah, it just plugs straight into the bottom, but yeah, we'll visit that a little bit later as we go on. Right. The next cable here is the fan cables. Now this one is a little bit interesting. I'm going to show you how this connects to each other. This will connect to the fan header on the RGB controller. This is the motherboard side, so that will plug into the CPU fan header. This is where you will connect your splitter and you plug the splitter in so you can connect both of the fans to the opposite end. Now this is the supplied addressable 3-pin RGB cable. It's actually a splitter, so it allows you to connect three addressable RGB devices to one connector on the RGB controller itself. And yeah, you can't plug these cables in the wrong way. They only go in one way. Last but not least, the controller itself. Uh, this is pretty straightforward stuff here. It's got buttons to control everything, but that will be available in the software control anyway. You can see the addressable headers on this side, and you'll see all of the additional connectors on each other side. And this is actually one really cool feature. It's magnetic, so you do not need to use double-sided tape. It'll just stick to your case. All right, let's get these connections sorted out. The first thing we're going to do is find an available USB header and feed the cable through and actually plug that USB header cable that we mentioned at the start of the cable section and plug that in so you can get connection for software control. Yeah, pretty straightforward stuff. Most AIOs have this anyway. Right, so we're going to attach the CPU fan cable now, and this will attach to the CPU fan header that I mentioned previously. Yeah, just plug it in like so, and you should be good to go. And we'll address the wiring for the other side in a minute or so, so just hang on, we're getting to that. Right, so what you want to do is find the rear side of your case where that cable comes out, and get the splitter that we talked about previously, and plug it in just like so pretty straightforward stuff and yeah it should be ready to go now you just plug in both of your fans and this is the PWM power for the fans mind you yeah just plug those in just like so and you should be ready to go nice and easy right now we're gonna do the addressable RGB cables this is also pretty easy they only plug in one way as you can see and, and yeah just plug them in and, and you'll be fine they'll work Right, and yeah, make sure you plug in the one for the pump as well, otherwise you won't get that beautiful glow. Right, now, time for the RGB controller. The fun stuff, right? Right, anyway, let's get into it. <laughs> so you need to find some SATA power to connect up to it. I have one available here to make it easy for me in this system. And yeah, you just plug it into the bottom. Now we're gonna plug in that rogue green and black fan cable. There's actually a fan icon on the controller that will help you get this connected. So yeah, just plug it in. It's usually the one that you can see in my hand right now. I don't know, does that make sense? Anyway, uh, and now we're gonna plug in that USB cable into the header cable that we showed you just now and it plugs right into the micro USB port on the bottom. Pretty straightforward stuff here. Right, and as you can see here, like magic, it sticks magnetically to the case. You do not need double-sided tape. I wish more manufacturers would actually do this. And that's it, it's installed. I'm not gonna show you how to do cable management because I'm pretty sure you guys can figure that stuff out for yourself. With that installation guide, it should work. And yeah, let us know how you went with your own installation. I hope this guide helped you with your own build and answered a few of the questions that a lot of you guys have been asking in the comment sections in the last few videos. The Master Liquid ML240R can be purchased via the link in the description. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you didn't like about it. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in a comment down below, as well as join our Discord community. There's also a link to that in the description as well. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm Nick with Git Seekers. You peek, we seek, we out. I'm gonna pick that box up now. <laughs>